Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. It has been a long time <laughs> since I posted anything over here and a lot has happened. I hope that you're all staying as safe and healthy as you possibly can and I'm sending you all so much love. But um, aside from the global uh, craziness that we're going through right now, I've also had some changes in my personal life as well since I've posted over here. And I won't bore you with the details now, but one thing that's somewhat relevant to this channel here is that I've actually moved into a little house. I haven't uh, lived in a house since I was about 14. I've lived in apartments. So yeah, it's a pretty big deal for me and I'm really excited about it. It's, I feel so lucky and so grateful and just, yeah, it's been pretty cool. I'm actually going to be talking to you about this tea in a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of changes, a lot of things are different and I wanted to start this channel over again for a long time now. And now that things have kind of shaken up a little bit and I have a new space and a new kitchen and a bit of a yard and lots of new hobbies and interests that have come out of this change and all of these changes. So I thought it would be a, a really good time to revamp and start making some videos over here again. I'm still definitely going to be making vegan recipes and things like that. But my real idea for this channel is to just kind of share some things that have been making me happy lately. <laughs> That's sort of the type of content that I like to watch on YouTube and, you know, just sort of people sharing the things that they're passionate about, things that they feel excited about. And so, yeah, I, I figured I would do that. So without further ado, why don't I? show you some stuff I've been up to. the things that I've been doing is actually making tea from the yard. Uh, this particular tea is from uh, faux dandelions or cat's ears. It's basically, they just look like little dandelions and I thought they were dandelions when I co collected them and then I slowly realized that it's not but that you can actually make tea out of these as well. I'm not sure if you can see but it's really nice, kind of spicy, and a little bit peppery. It's really good. So now I'll just show you how I make this tea. So these little, they're actually called false dandelions, uh, or flatweed, or cat's ear, and they just sort of spring up, they're perennials, they come up every year and they're they're very small. They're really delicate little little flowers. And they kind of come up all over the yard in different places. It's fun to go and look for them. And yeah, I just pick the tops off, the flowers off of them. You can also make a tea out of the leaves, but for this one I was using the flowers. And then I just allow the sun to dry the little flower heads. And I like 
to save it in a little kind of glass bottle or glass jar and you can save it in anything that you'd like, a bit of cloth, anything like that and uh, yeah, this was just sort of the remnants of it. <laughs> I don't really know how much um, bang for your buck or bang for your energy you're really getting out of some of these teas because it's, it requires a lot of flowers or a lot of gathering in this case uh, in order to kind of have that same effect uh, as a regular bag of tea. But it's kind of interesting and it helps me learn a little bit more about plants and specifically about the plants that are in my yard and it also helps me understand uh, just a little bit about the different ways that you can, when you harvest them, how you can use them and the different flavor palettes of all of the different flowers. So. I think it's really fun and it's really, really nice to learn about these things, particularly since, yeah, I've never really had a garden where I could just go out and pick something and then make a dish with it. I just think that's so cool. So. So the yard absolutely just exploded in these orange and yellow blossoms and these little round almost lily pad looking leaves. So much of this yard when we moved in was, it was just so barren and just covered in weeds and now I've learned how beautiful weeds can really be. And I have a real love for nasturtiums now. I just think they're such a beautiful addition to the garden. They self-seed, so they really just kind of spread all over the place. And I've been using them in all kinds of things. I use them in salads, I use them to throw on top of uh, different dishes like pastas or you know quinoa bowls or burritos <laughs> but for this it was just really fun kind of going through the process of figuring out how to make tasty drinks out of these beautiful flowers in the yard and I'm not gonna lie it felt very I felt like I was working in an apothecary or something. It felt really magical doing these. For about a month I was making different teas from the yard out of different leaves and things like that. I've done it several different ways. For this particular time I used purified water and then just a little bit of raw sugar. Mix it up and then I just put it in the sun and I let it sun brew. I think that was a really, a really cool way of doing it. I would say probably for the nasturtiums, my favorite way was to boil the water. But this was really cool too. It felt like stepping back in time almost, having sun brewed floral tea from the yard. <laughs> I was so excited when the whole yard just turned yellow and white with the honeysuckles. In a lot of ways the yard was a, a real kind of mess like I said and so just the joy of springtime coming around even though there's been so much craziness happening in the world but to have just these little things to kind of bring a little bit of brightness, a little bit of joy. Uh, made a lot of difference mental health wise and all that. So I was very, very happy to see these clouds of <laughs> honeysuckle just wrapped around. This is a little trellis and the 
they're wrapped kind of all around different things in the yard. I heard someone say recently, if you call it a yard, it'll never be a garden. So I've been trying to call it a garden. <laughs> But I'm so new to all of this. It's just, I feel a bit like a kid in a candy store every time I walk outside, finding new things. My partner makes fun of me because I, he says my eyes just light up whenever I go out there and find something new that looks like all the other things to him. <laughs> I try to take the flowers that are a bit more mature, but before they get too ripe, I think that sweet spot of kind of like a sunny yellow is really nice. I always wash anything really, really well. Even though there aren't any pesticides, it's nice to just get it nice and clean before you use it. So for the honeysuckle and the nasturtium, it did take a lot of those fresh flowers. Whereas the cat's ear, I think it might have been because it was dried. It just takes a few of those little blossoms, even though they're much, much smaller, to have a cup of tea. But because they are so small, <laughs> collecting them, yeah, it takes, uh, takes a bit of time. But any time to spend outside is definitely not time wasted. So I just used purified water and for this one again, I just placed it in a really sunny spot outside. And it was really hot by the time I cracked it open. So we discovered that we had two pomegranate trees. The flowers are so interesting, they're really, really the base of the flower is really, really thick and the petals are really light. So in a weird way, it's a very sturdy flower, but it, it's also very, very delicate. The petals fall off very easily. The color is so beautiful though. And honestly, it's just, it's such a joy just walking through the yard and collecting things in my little basket. And I always leave plenty for the birds and the squirrels and the bugs <laughs> to have their fill as well. The bees, we have so many bees.
I just took a few. I left a lot. Obviously, loads on the trees. And for this one, I boiled it in some water. I think I boiled it for about 20 minutes. And the water turns a pinkish, reddish color. It's really, really pretty. The nasturtiums have a really nutty flavor really kind of warm and a bit spicy. The honeysuckle is really sweet and floral. The pomegranate tea has a bit of a, almost a fruity, yeah, I guess that makes sense, it's pomegranate, fruity flavor to it. A bit lighter, kind of like hibiscus tea a bit. If you are going to make these teas, I would definitely say don't leave them for too long, particularly the nasturtium tea. Drink it relatively quickly because we made the horrible mistake of leaving it for, I think it was about a week. One of the batches, I made a few glasses that day and I just left one of them for too long. And oh my gosh, it smelled like rotten egg when we opened it, so be really careful if you decide to make it. There was something that felt very whole and right about being in the yard and looking out at the flowers as I'm drinking the tea that I made from them. I don't know, it just felt very connected and <laughs> it was really special. Everything okay? Oh, right. Well, I didn't think I could let an entire video go by without letting Georgie say hi. So, Georgie, you want to say hi? Oh, good girl. Oh my goodness. Georgie just had a bath and uh, so she's looking a little sad and a little sorry for herself. <laughs> she uh, has a new hobby. She likes finding uh, animal poop around the yard and eating it. Yum! So we had to give you a bath, didn't we? Yeah, a little bath. And we brush your teeth. Yay! <laughs> she absolutely loves the yard. She plays out in the yard all the time. stay out there with her whenever she's out there because uh, yeah I think it's it's just better for us to be with her kind of all the time she just has the one eye if you haven't seen my video where we adopted her she just has one eye and she's basically blind almost completely blind so um, we keep her hair long on this side so that yeah so she doesn't get so conscious about that but um we're kind of her seeing eye humans. Ha ha ha. But yeah. And we have some succulents and some cactus, um, cacti in the in the back garden. So we just need to kind of be with her and make sure she's okay. And on top of that, there are a lot of hawks and birds of prey in this neighborhood. And I don't know if they ever would uh, go after her, but she lost her eye, they think, to a coyote. So we just want to kind of be with her and make sure nothing like that happens. And I'm, I might be a little bit of a paranoid m mom. <laughs> but yeah, she really has been a joy at this time. Really such a source of comfort and love. She's so uh, percept uh, perceptive. 
she's really in touch, I think, with us. I feel really connected to her and I just, I just love her so much. But yeah, maybe we um, come up with some new hobbies that aren't uh, feces involved, you know, feces themed. Does that sound okay? She hates <laughs> getting baths. Like she's so chill and depressed. <laughs> oh, sweetness. Okay, we're gonna go uh, outside and warm up in the sunshine, eh, Jeech? Little better be. But it was so nice hanging out with you. I hope that, yeah, I hope that you're all doing, doing as well as possible. Staying safe, staying healthy, all of that. If you're not subscribed, uh, go ahead and subscribe if you'd like to, if you're into that, if you want to see more of this little gem. I don't know if you can, like, she's so cute. She's a cute little puppy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, subscribe, like the video, um, leave me a comment, let me know, you know, what, uh, what you've been up to. I'd love to hear. So, all right. I will see you again very soon. And we're off to have another adventure. Okay. Bye. What do you think? This is not good for you. You don't love this. How do you feel about this? You love a belly scratch. You're not the biggest fan of this position. Oh, there we go. Oh, you love this position. A little tummy scratch. And that is. Yeah. Good girl. Hello, my little butter bean. <laughs>